Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Aiden Robbins. I'm a filmmaker and YouTuber. And in this final video, I'm gonna be showing you how to work with blend modes in your video editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. Blend modes dictate how a clip interacts with the clips beneath it. So if I just duplicate this clip here and drag it on top of the one next to it, this will give me an opportunity to demonstrate a few different blend modes and how they work. Blend modes can be found under the opacity section of Eclipse Effect Controls tab. And if we open up this blend mode menu, we'll see that there are a ton of different options and they're divided into several different groups. First, we have the normal section and these two blend modes just specify how the clip appears when the opacity is changed. So first we have normal, this acts exactly how you would expect it to. When you reduce the opacity, the clip just fades away smoothly. And then we have the dissolve option where when we reduce the opacity, you'll notice the clip takes the form of dots and the dots become further apart when the opacity is reduced. Under the normal category, we have the darken category. And as the name might imply, all of these blend modes will darken the clip in some way. They will leave the darker parts of the image and get rid of the lighter parts. So if we flick through here, you can see some are more dramatic than others. Some affect the clip a little differently, but they are all ultimately darkening the bottom clip by getting rid of the lighter parts of the top clip. Next up, we have the lighten group, and these are the exact opposite of the darken group. If we flick through a few, you can see that they are all giving us a lighter end result by getting rid of the darker parts of the top clip and leaving the lighter parts. After that, it starts to get a little more complex with the complex groups such as overlay and soft light. And these ones are called complex because they affect different pixels differently. For example, linear light, which makes lighter parts of the image lighter and darker parts of the image even darker. We also have the difference group, which will often take the difference between the two clips. So you'll often see some inverted color effects happening here and some interesting effects to say the least. And finally, we have the HSL or hue, saturation and luminosity group. And these all work more or less the same way. For example, if I select the hue blend mode, the top clip will retain its hue, but take its saturation and luminosity from the clip below it. If I select saturation, it will retain its saturation, but take its hue and luminosity from the bottom clip. Now you might say, Aiden, huh? That is very, very confusing. And you are absolutely right. I agree. Blend modes are very, very confusing. But the good news is that you only really need to know a few of these well for video editing. So let's talk about the few most commonly used blend modes for typical day-to-day -day editing. The first is screen, which hides the darker parts of the top layer and leaves the lighter parts. And this is useful for working with stock footage that has a black background. For example, I have this light leak element here, and I'm just going to add this over these first couple of clips. And you can see if I switch the blend mode from normal to screen, we are getting rid of the darker parts and leaving just the lighter parts of the image. And this is why screen is so useful because anytime you have stock footage on a black background like dust or a light leak, a lens flare, fire, explosion, smoke, a lot of stock footage that you use for compositing has a black background. This is how you work with it. For working with footage like this, you can also use the add blend mode. And if you use this, you'll see it's just a more dramatic version of screen. It's lightening the clip more and giving it more of a dramatic brightness and glow to it. In this particular instance, I prefer screen. I think it looks a lot softer and more natural, but add and screen are definitely worth checking out both when you're working on an effect just to see which looks better for that particular situation. And finally, let's talk about overlay, which is a blend mode that I use a good bit for my color grading. So to give you an example, I'm going to create a new black video, which is basically just a completely blank layer with nothing on it. I'm going to drag that above my clip, and then I'm going to add an effect to it called ramp. And ramp is an effect that allows you to create a gradient between two colors. We'll have the option to move the points of this gradient around. So I'm going to put the black point at the bottom and the white point at the top. So we have this nice fade from white to black with gray in the middle. And then you can see if we switch the blend mode to overlay, the bottom of the frame becomes much darker and the top becomes much 
lighter. We're adding a lot of dramatic contrast into that clip by doing that. So of course, I'm not gonna leave it at 100% opacity. I'm gonna turn it way down, maybe to even like 20%. And you can see we're just adding a little more drama and punch into the shot. Blend modes can also be used to add graphics over your footage. So you can see here, I have this nice, simple title graphic, just white text on a black background. If I just position that over some footage here, you can see if I change the blend mode to screen, then the black is going to disappear, leaving us with just a nice clean white title over our footage. Or I could even try, you know, maybe setting the blend mode to multiply. And now we have a different but interesting effect where the black is left behind and the white is gone, leaving us with a title that shows the footage within it. So kind of interesting creative effects you can play around with for creating some unique titles. And that brings us to the end of the process of creating this little sequence here. And of course, all the other videos that are a part of this series will be linked in the playlist below. So you can watch the other parts of this process, masking, using LUTs, one-click color matching, audio effects, all the other topics we dived into in these five videos. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you learned something new that you can apply to your own work going forward.